In this video, I'd like to show you how easy it is to create a test using a Huntron tracker to scan this 40 pin connector on this circuit card. So what we'll be using is the front panel connector on the tracker 3200S using a custom cable that I've created here. One end has a 64 pin IDC connector through a ribbon cable to a 40 pin connector on the other end of the ribbon cable that goes into this connector on the circuit card. So we'll go ahead and connect this up, go into the 64 pin IDC on the tracker, and then to the 40 pin connector on the circuit card. The reason we want to do this is because it's so much faster to use the built-in scanner on the tracker than to try to hand probe the individual pins on this connector. So now we'll switch over to workstation. So we'll start by adding a new card in workstation. We'll use add new board. Get this down here. We'll call it the, this is just a video card, so we'll call it video card. Click OK. And we'll save that to our hard drive. Now we'll add a sequence for this component. So we'll add, use the add new button. And we'll just call it, how about connectors? Because we may be adding more connectors to this test. So now I add a new component using the add new button. We'll call this J29. The package style will be SIP, which means that starting with pin one, it'll go back and forth between the rows of pins in an alternating fashion as it works its way down the ribbon cable. We'll also select our number of pins, which on this component is 40. And then click OK to add that component. We'll go to the Ranges tab. These are the default ranges here that Workstation installs. And looking at these range settings, these should work fairly well for scanning this connector. The other thing we want to consider here is the common pin. I've already taken the time to find out which pin on this connector is ground, because I want to use ground as my common reference. I found that pin 2 is connected to ground. So on my common pin here, I'm going to go ahead and select this as 2. Then I'll right click on the column header and select ranges. What that's going to do is set all three ranges to the same common pin. Another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set this common the same for all of the pins. A quick way to do that is to go to the group edit, select all the pins for the component, and we want the common pin number one to be the same on all the pins as pin number one, which is set right here, and we'll update that. Okay, we'll click OK. Close that, Oop, update's complete, and then we'll close this. There we go. So now if we go to a different pin, I'll just use the next pin button right here. There you'll see all of its common pins are set to two. Go to pin three, I'm looking down here at the status bar, and you see that common pin one is set for, for uh, pin number two. So that's how you would set all of the pins to the same common. So when the scan is executed, it'll attach pin number two on the connector to ground, or in this case to common, and then run the scan. So now we're ready to go ahead and run this scan. This is a good card, so I'm going to call it by its serial number, 703. I'm going to put the word good in there so I know this is the good card. And then we'll click start. So here you can see the instruction box. I didn't put any instructions about connecting up the common cable, but you could certainly do that when you created the component. So now the tracker and the software will scan through each of the 40 pins in three ranges. As it scans, you see each of those three ranges being displayed here on the screen. And as you can see, this is going to be much faster than using your hand probes to scan each of these 40 pins in three ranges. Um, this is why we take the time to create a custom cable to scan this connector automatically. Many customers will go ahead and add all the connectors on their board to their overall test for the circuit card and sometimes run those connectors first as part of a first pass test. That way, if they see any problems at the connector level, they can just trace those pins back into the board and maybe help find the fault. So this came up as no ref. Of course, this is the first time we've scanned this card, and this is our good card. We can look at the troubleshoot. And you can see we have two pins showing all opens. The software will automatically default to putting all of the 
opens at the top of the list here. So if we click on this top one here, that's pin number 20. We scan down one pin, 32 is also open. It's not uncommon to see open pins on a connector. That just means they're just not connected or not connected to any components on the card. So we'll go ahead and set these as our reference signatures. This is the good card. So we'll set reference. And that's now complete. So now what we'll do is we'll switch from the good card to the bad card. And I'll just go ahead and pause the video here. It'll take me a minute or two to do that. So no sense in recording that. Okay, so now I've got my bad card connected up here. I've got the ribbon cable attached now to that same connector, but this is a different card than our good one. And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and run the same test on this card. So now we'll switch over to Workstation. We'll go ahead and go to the Scan tab. Now this is a different card. We'll make sure we put the, in the proper serial number and information. So this is 211. And we'll go ahead and add the word bad on here so we know this was a bad card that we scanned. Click the Start button. And again, we'll have our instruction window pop up. So we'll click OK. To to start the scan. So now in this case we already have the reference signatures stored into the database. These signatures will now be compared against the stored reference once the scan is complete. This connector does go to one of the microcontrollers on the card, so we do see a lot of semiconductor signatures showing up on this scan. Okay, just about complete. Okay, so the result came up failed. We kind of expected that because I knew this was a bad card and I did do some pre-checking on this and I did know that there was going to be a failure on the connector because otherwise this wouldn't be a very interesting video. So we'll click on the troubleshoot button and we do see here on pin 39 where we would normally see a resistor signature, some sort of resistive signature. If we look at the reference signature, it has an angled line that we see just a vertical line. In fact, we see that in all three ranges, including the 50 ohm range, it's showing a vertical line. That pretty much tells us this pin is shorted to common, or in this case, to ground. So in this case, we would probably go take a closer look at that particular pin, make sure there's not a solder bridge. Um, if we don't see that, then we would essentially trace where this pin goes. We would expect it to go to some sort of resistor on the card, because it looks like we have a fairly large resistor, maybe 10 to 20 K ohms um, sitting on this pin. And we maybe would look to see if that's shorted. Maybe there's a solder bridge um, or maybe a component that it's connected to is shorted. So a little bit of investigation and we'll use this information to help troubleshoot the card. So just by scanning a 40 pin connector, we quickly found a way to find a fault on the card that we need to investigate. So we hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see any more of our videos, please visit our YouTube channel. And as always, thank you for watching.